Hi, my students usually have to use different resources off the internet to complete their courses and to write term papers for their courses. These resources could be library books, they could be articles from encyclopedias, they could be journal articles, peer-reviewed articles, any material they might find online such as weblogs or personal blogs, blog posts, interviews, stuff from YouTube, you name it. These material, these resources, they need to be incorporated in their work at the end of the course and they uh, have to create a list of uh, used resources at the end of their papers. Uh, what happens is that they will need, according to the course requirements and according to the requirements of um, academic writing, they uh, will need uh, to provide a list of material they borrowed from the internet or other places, then they also have to give inline citations inside of the text of their paper and correctly credit people who uh, gave them the, the knowledge or allowed them to come to that conclusion that they come to. Uh, this might sound simple, well, you borrowed from source A, B, C, and then you say in your text, you say that I borrowed this material from source A, B, C. That might sound simple, but when you want to do it, there are thousands of styles that your professor or your university or the journal you are going to submit your paper to will ask you to follow. They will ask you to follow this or that style for citation. And these bibliog bibliography uh, styles or citation styles vary from professor to professor, from course to course, from university to university, or journal to journal. It is very difficult to keep track of all the requirements of these styles. Each one of them, they have a different way of putting things together. The list of works cited, for example, sometimes they start with the date, sometimes they start with the name of the person, sometimes they start with the surname, sometimes it starts with the last name, first name. With a, with, a, with a different type of thing, an element. And the way that they separate different fields in the, uh, in the, in the final work could be different. Some of them they use full stop, uh, some of them they use comma, and so on. The parts of these, uh, these uh, references, uh, the entries in your list, sometimes they are italic, sometimes they are not. Different parts have different ways of um, you know, making it italic, bold, or whatnot. Some styles they use or allow you to use URLs or link, or web link to the, the, the source materials. Uh, some of them they don't. There are many variations. It is not easy to keep track of them. Unfortunately, students will find it gradually really hard to uh, adhere to the standards or even to understand the standards for that matter. So what happens in the long run? Uh, students are stressed under lots of pressure to complete their papers, to submit their, their final papers, to give their deliverables at the end of the, the semester or project. And uh, that pressure uh, is not really helped by this fact that you have to follow this standard or that standard. Sometimes you don't know e even how to do that because the style sheets might not be really complete or the examples that the style sheets would give you might not be that much clear. So what happens is that under pressure and because of the lack of resources and time, students might fall behind, they might make errors, and their final work might even be rejected by the professors or the journals they send the, the paper to. The journal might say, oh, I'm sorry, the uh, final work, uh, the work cited or the bibliography does not follow my standard. Please go back and fix it and resend it. The professor might come back to you and th they might say the same thing. That is bad, but it can get even worse. Because of th this type of pressure that is usually on, on students, they might uh, find it hard to adhere to the highest uh, level of ethical um, academic integrity. So they, there might be some uh, ethical lapses. What I, what I mean is that they might 
kind of try to somehow get around this act of citation and crediting the authors they used and by doing that they are committing they are going to commit plagiarism that is really bad when they are caught unfortunately which happens almost always <laughs> the least that can happen is they would get a zero for that project but much much worse thing can, that can happen to a student uh, they can be even kicked out of the school so in order to fix that issue there have been many many solutions online uh, available on the internet you can find some of them you can buy as a solution you can buy like a software and install it as a standalone software on your computer and use some of them you can subscribe to their service online it really depends on the, the service provider these places or pro programs or companies that create these programs they would allow you to organize your research collect the data you need for your final research put them in one place manage them properly and use them in order to create correct citations both inline citations and references at the end of your paper there are quite a few of them if you just search online uh, use a search engine and um, search for uh, research assistant or um, uh, citation manager things terms like that keywords like that uh, you will find tens if not hundreds of different solutions out there not all of them are of the same quality and standard some of them are much better than others one of them that turned out to be a fabulous software it is open source it is freely available to everybody and it has a big community around it and it is under um, continuous development is called Zotero Zotero is a research assistant it allows you as a student or a researcher to gather your data all resources that you want put them in one place as entries to to those information your resources might be all over the place it could be an article here a document there a video here and something else there a book on your bookshelf but you can create entries in the database of Zotero and each database uh, would create a profile of the source you used for example I have a whole bunch of books sitting here on my shelves here if I use a book I don't I can't put the book into the computer but what I can do is I can create an entry for the book in Zotero and tell Zotero this entry this to give them a name name of the book for example uh, here is a book that I can see Darwin's dangerous idea written by a, a philosopher very famous philosopher Daniel Dennett I can put that as an entry in Zotero give the name of the author uh, give the name of the title of the book when it was published where it was published and so on later when I use the uh, the book as my reference maybe some idea from the book is relevant to my research so I use that and now I want to credit the book the book that I used instead of doing that crediting by hand manually creating those inline citations and end of the text uh, reference list I use Zotero Zotero will do that for me as a result of this activities that are related to citation creation of inline citation creation of the list of work uh, works um, or, or references activities related to creation of bibliographies and stuff uh, similar to to these these tasks can be offloaded to Zotero if that is not good enough Zotero can switch between different style sheets in a blink of an eye couple of clicks and you can pick a style sheet that is suitable to your needs and Zotero will automatically update everything that you already put in, inside of your document that is an amazing thing once you know how to use Zotero your world which will, will change because this program is so well written so well integrated with a few other pieces of software on your computer that you would ask yourself why you haven't used this you hadn't used it in the past why didn't you know about it why your professor or, or university did not introduce this software to you where can you find Zotero so now you know what Zotero is where can you find Zotero Zotero lives in a website called uh, Zotero.org that is where it, it lives that's that's the home of Zotero and on that website you will see as you can see on my um, 
desktop uh, inside of this browser uh, you can see i already opened zotero it's in front of us uh, on the screen and there you can see that there are groups and documentation links to forums and even if you want to get involved with the development of zotero you can actually do that too because it's an open source program if you know programming why not get involved fix some bugs if you find some there's always something to do there's always improvements to to make but if you are just like myself a user of software and you're just doing research and you need a helping hand to fix the problem of citations in your in your uh, documents then you just need to visit this website zotero.org on the website you will see the introduction as you can see on the screen and also you will see a download link a download button in the middle it's red at least right now at the time of making this video when you click on that the next page will detect your operating system and your browser and will introduce the proper uh, correct uh, installation software uh, to you most probably you will do that if you have not if you have not disabled the javascript so i click on download as you can see it already detected what i am using i'm using microsoft windows and my version is microsoft windows 10 so it correctly detected that i'm using windows 10 so it offered me zotero version 5.0 for microsoft windows if you're using mac os it will show you the other version that is suitable for mac os if you're using linux the same happens for linux though so this part is where you get the inst installation package for zotero when you click on that button an installation package a setup piece of a uh, package would be inst uh, would be downloaded on your computer i have already done that I clicked on that one and uh, it already uh, downloaded that for me sometimes you might want to try to figure out where it put the downloaded file sometimes it can be in your uh, default folder usually it's in in the downloads but if it is not there you have to figure out where your downloads go once you found your your downloaded piece of software you can go ahead and run that software and install it the installation process is kind of a no-brainer very simple you just double click on it and it starts to ask you a couple of questions you say next 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 and it moves forward and it will install the program for you because i have already installed this program on my computer several times uh, i don't want to mess up my current installation i would install it in an isolated uh, location on my computer so i would have a few extra pop-up uh, menus but you will not see those the, the menu that you will see is the extraction menu that uh, a few seconds ago you saw that and then you will see uh, the welcome menu that uh, asks you to okay continue and go through the process of installation click on next uh, choose either you want to go for installation uh, default installation called in standard or if you want to change some of the parameters i think standard installation will be okay so i click on next right now for my case it detected that i have already installed it in zotero so that's why the button i see here it says upgrade but you will see the next button anyway i click it on that and it takes a few moments so almost a minute uh, for the installation to complete it will uh, it will install all of the, the required packages and files and folders that are necessary for the operation of Zotero into that folder on your computer. Um, you don't have to do anything about it. You just be patient until this process is finished. Once the process is finished, uh, this, this installer will um, add a shortcut on your desktop and will add another shortcut in your start menu. So you will see uh, something similar to this, this shortcut that I have here. I already have the shortcut. I already have quite a few of them. That's why it's numbered now, but that's okay. This is how to install Zotero. Our work for this video is almost finished. Before I let you go, however, I need to just remind you of one more thing. Some parts of Zotero requires, some parts of it require the installation of Java runtime. Zotero itself will run if you don't have Java runtime on your computer installed. Some people don't have it. 
it will run if you double click on it it will run like, like this i double click on it and it will uh, it will run no problem you will not see an issue however you will see a complication or an issue later when you want to connect zotero to your LibreOffice uh, or microsoft word and um, when you want to uh, perhaps connect it to, to firefox or chrome to avoid that problem you need to download and install the latest version of java runtime environment and also you have to download the version appropriate for your operating system for my case i just search for java runtime the first item on my list is java runtime java for for windows i click on that one it will give me a list of stuff that i can download um, i either can go with this online version which allows me to initially download something almost two two megabytes and then double click on it and go through the installation then it will install it will download the rest of it automatically or it allows me to grab the offline version which is initially downloads the whole package uh, for java runtime all at once and it would it will install it uh, once i double click on it don't forget if you're using a 32-bit operating system like a windows th that is 32 bit you will need this version and if you're using a 64 bit operating system you will need this version if you're uh, installing a different version uh, you you will find some weird um, error messages later when you're trying to connect the to other pieces of yourself of other pieces of your um, word processor or browser so this is the only thing that you need to do in case you don't already have Java on your system. If you already have Java on your system, then forget about this step and just uh, go ahead to the next video in which I'm going to talk about how Zotero is uh, integrated or can be integrated in your workflow for your research and how you can benefit from the things that Zotero uh, has to offer. All right. If you enjoyed this video, uh, give it a thumb up and uh, don't forget to subscribe um click on the on the little bell down there uh, so you would be informed the next time i upload the next uh, video until the next video see you then